7. Rationalism and Sentimentalism Rupert Christensen, in Romantic Affinities, very ably summarized the philosophy of sentimentalism in these words. It, quote, was based on the principle that, if allowed to follow its instincts, humankind was full of, quote, pity, tenderness, and benevolence. To a sentimentalist, what consequently mattered in human relations was sincerity and candour, the refusal to kowtow to the convention and compromises of a so-called civilised life, end quote. Sentimentalism was one of the consequences of the Enlightenment's shift from God to man, from God's law to man's law, and from God's word to man's feelings. The result was confusion in one area of thinking after another. Thus, Edward Young, regarded as more Christian than most in his day, could still write in his Night Thoughts, 1764, Our senses, as our reason, are divine, but for the magic organ's powerful charm, earth were a crude, uncoloured chaos still. Objects are but the occasion, ours the exploit. Ours is the cloth, the pencil, and the paint which nature's admirable picture draws. This was substantially what Immanuel Kant was to state in The Critique of Pure Reason. The world had become a construct of man's mind rather than the hand of God. For young, both the senses and reason were alike divine and creative. The modern world was well underway. As a result, man became the great judge and God, the judged. This is especially clear in the Romantic poets. What Christensen said of Mary Wollstonecraft was true of her generation and those to follow. They were, quote, fueled by a bottomless fund of undirected resentment, end quote. Poets like Percy Bysshe Shelley and Lord Byron were classic examples of this. Before the court of reason, God was arraigned and found wanting. The religious rationalists within the church defended God in this strange, quote, last judgment, end quote, as acceptable to reason. At the same time, they arraigned those Christians as dangerous rationalists who refused to see their defense as necessary. The rationalists defined man in terms of this reason, but in the world of Charles Darwin, as of Kant, what is man and what is reason? He came out of nothing and ends in nothing, and reason is simply a tool for survival, or perhaps for self-delusion. In a universe of chance, how can man define himself, and how can he define reason? All ideas of meaning and purpose erode into meaninglessness in a world without God. Causality presupposes design or cause. As David said, quote, for with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. End quote. Psalm 36 9. If man has fallen, so too is his reason, and we might say especially his reason, because it seeks to erect itself as judge over God, as God over God. To challenge man religiously, we must begin by challenging the autonomy of his reason. To presuppose reason as autonomous and therefore a competent judge over God is absurd. As Paul said so clearly, quote, Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Romans 9.20 We cannot have a different presupposition in philosophy than we do in theology and apologetics. In every sphere of life and thought we begin with the triune God and his inscriptured word to the, quote, cultured despisers, end quote, of Christianity, this may seem absurd, and from the standpoint of autonomous man, it seems to be so. But autonomous man is a myth, a product of man's sin-sick imagination. God, who created all things, is here forever, yesterday, today, and throughout all eternity, whereas man is like the grass of the field here today and gone tomorrow. In the words of Isaiah, quote, The voice said, Cry, 
and he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand for ever. End quote. Isaiah 40, 6-8 But to quote scripture to these quote-unquote Christian rationalists is to often incur their contempt because they assume that their philosophy represents a higher wisdom than the Bible, the word of God. The issue is always the same, human autonomy or God's sovereignty. If God is the Lord, the sovereign over all creation, Rationalism is not only false, but it is a sinful rebellion. Reason is not demoted by being denied autonomy and the quote-unquote right to judge God. Rather, reason is given the freedom of the creature to think God's thoughts after him. Christian rationalism is thus an arrogant form of sentimentalism. A very simple definition of sentimentalism is that it is the disposition to give a disproportionate amount of feeling or thought to any subject or object. Rousseau was, of course, the great philosopher of sentimentalism. We see sentimentalism today in a variety of causes and movements, as, for example, many forms of the environmental movements. Such Warped causes will insist on a radical concern, for example, for the snail darter, as though the universe depended on its survival. All too many causes in our time arouse a disproportionate and foolish concern. This same sentimentalism is all too present within church circles. Rationalism is one form of it. We cannot be guilty of this without sin. About the author, Russus John Rushdoney, 1916-2001, was a well-known American scholar, writer and author of over 30 books. He held BA and MA degrees from the University of California and received his theological training at the Pacific School of Religion. An ordained minister, he worked as a missionary among the Paiutes and Shoshone Indians and as a pastor to two California churches. He founded the Chalcedon Foundation an education organization devoted to research, publishing and cogent communication of a distinctively Christian scholarship to the world at large. His writing in the Chalcedon Report and his numerous books inspired a generation of believers to be active in reconstructing the world to the glory of Jesus Christ. Until his death, he resided in Vallecito, California, where he engaged in research, lecturing, and assisting others in developing programs to put the Christian faith into action. The Ministry of Chalcedon Chalcedon is a Christian educational organization devoted exclusively to research, publishing, and cogent communication of a distinctively Christian scholarship to the world at large. It makes available a variety of services and programs, all geared to the needs of interested ministers, scholars, and laymen, who understand the propositions that Jesus Christ speaks to the mind as well as the heart, and that his claims extend beyond the narrow confines of the various institutional churches. We exist in order to support the efforts of all Orthodox denominations and churches. Chalcedon derives its name from the great ecclesiastical Council of Chalcedon, AD 451, which produced the crucial Christological definition, quote, Therefore, following the Holy Fathers, we all with one accord teach men to acknowledge one and the same Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at once complete in Godhead and complete in manhood, truly God and truly man. This formula directly challenges every false claim of divinity by any human institution, state, church, cult, school, or human assembly. Christ alone is both God and man, the unique link between heaven and earth. All human power is therefore derivative. Christ alone can announce that, quote, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, end quote, Matthew 28, 18. Historically, the Chalcedonian Creed is therefore the foundation of Western liberty, 
for it sets limits on all authoritarian human institutions by acknowledging the validity of the claims of the one who is the source of true human freedom. Galatians 5.1 The Chalcedon Foundation publishes books under its own name and that of Ross House Books. It produces a magazine, Faith for All of Life, and a newsletter, The Chalcedon Report, both bi-monthly. All gifts to Chalcedon are tax-deductible. For complimentary trial subscriptions or information on other book titles, please contact Calcedon, Box 158, Vallecito, California, 95251, USA. Calcedon, C-H-A-L-C-E-D-O-N dot E-D-U. This has been a Calcedon Foundation production, produced by Grace Community School and Nicene Covenant Church, published by Ross House Books, Van Til Copyright 1960, and Essays Newly Published 2005-2013, Mark R. Rushdoony. If you've enjoyed this audiobook, be sure to visit calcedon.edu for more books and audiobooks by R.J. Rushdoony.